I've got good news for you. I've got good news for you. I want to share with you what Jesus Christ has done for you and I. And I've entitled today's message, Empty Tomb, Abundant Life. How many of you want abundant life? Oh, you got to hear heart on this one. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we want to commit this time to you. We ask, so oh God, even as the speaker speaks, it will be the word of the Holy Spirit, the conviction of the Holy Spirit, the love of the Holy Spirit that will speak to every heart this morning, whether here on site or watching online. That men and women will respond to your love because we do all this because of your love for us. So Lord, we commit this time to you, asking for you to do a marvelous work in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. You see, almost 2,000 years ago, a powerful miracle happened. Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross, as you've seen in the drama earlier, on Good Friday. All right, that's like two days ago. But you know what? The good news is he did not remain dead. He was resurrected from the dead, from the grave, and is alive today and forevermore. He has conquered sin and death. In fact, he is the only person in the history of this, you know, of this universe, of this earth, that has ever risen from the dead. If you look at the history book, no one else claimed to have resurrected from the dead. Only Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ died on the cross and on the third day, he rose from the dead. And this is a very important fact because when we know that he has risen from the dead, he is not dead, but he is alive forevermore. In fact, he is with us right now. His presence is with us. Amen? God is alive. And therefore, Christianity is not a dead religion. We do not worship a dead God, but we worship a living Christ. And we have a living relationship with Him. Can somebody say amen? Okay, just a testimony. How many of you know Jesus Christ personally and you have a daily relationship with, with Him? Just wave at me. Okay, look around, look around, look around you. You see, Jesus is alive. He speaks to us. He talks to us. He blesses us. He gives us a purpose in life. And every day, we have that living relationship with Christ. If Jesus was, was dead and, and never was raised again, all we have is, you know, someone will say, oh, maybe he's a good man. He was a good man. And some will say, oh, maybe he was a good prophet. And some will say, Oh, he is a great teacher. But you know what? It would have just been that. He would have been a historical figure. And that was it. But he's not. He is risen. Amen. He is risen. And because he is risen, we have life forever more. Can somebody shout hallelujah? That is what Easter Sunday is about. It's a celebration of his resurrection. Amen. It is the most one, the most significant event that has ever taken place in the history of the world, in the history of the world. And today, if you were to visit Jerusalem and go to Jesus' grave, you can actually go there. They made it into a, um, a tourist site. I was there a few years ago. And when you look in, you know what? They celebrate. They put there, Jesus is risen. He is alive. He's no longer in the grave. Amen. He is alive today. Hallelujah. And this empty tomb gives us abundant life in so many ways. And today I want to share with you three truths about how the empty tomb brings us abundant life. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, we always remember three truths, right? Four, fourth truth, we can't remember already too many. Two, two truths is too few. So three truths. Amen. Number one, the empty tomb brings abundant life by giving salvation to all who would believe in him. And John 3.16 says this, very famous verse. If you know this verse, you can recite it with me, all right? One, two, three. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The Bible verse begins with, for God so loved the world. You see, the sole the soul motivation of God is love. The only reason why he came to earth to die on the cross for us was because he loved us. No other reason. We are the most important creation he has ever made. We are the pinnacle of his creation and he loved us so much. He loved us so much that the Bible says, for God so loved the world. This world is you and I. 
The, this word world in the Greek means you and I, human beings, that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God loves you and you and you and you and you and you so very much that he was willing to leave heaven's glory to come down to earth, suffered on the cross to die for our sins. And this is what Easter weekend is all about, is to remember what he has done, the great work of salvation for our soul. And friends, if somehow you're looking for love in your life, somehow there is an empty hole in your heart, there is a sense of loneliness, there is a sense of asking, who cares for me? Today the message to you is, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. You can find love in Christ, and he's the only one that can fill that void and that emptiness in your heart. And I received him into my life when I was 14 years old. And the moment, I know some of you are 14 sitting on the second row. Today is a good day to know the Lord. Maybe 13, I don't know, around there. But those many years ago when I received Jesus into my heart, he filled that loneliness, he filled that void. He gave me love. And that's why I am changed today. Can somebody give God a mighty hand? He's, yes, he's there to change our lives. He paid the price for the penalty of our sin. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's resurrected from the dead. And all you have to do is put your faith in him and say, Jesus, I welcome you into my life. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And the moment you do that, Jesus comes into your heart, fills your heart with love, fills your heart with his presence, and gives you a new destiny in him. And some of you may ask, you know, actually, a Pastor, I, 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 why should I be saved? You know, I don't think that I'm a sinner. You know, I've never killed anyone. I've never robbed anyone. I'm not like, you know, some of the people in Singapore recently have been slashing people. Uh, I'm, I'm not like that at all. I, I'm a good person. I'm a good man. I'm a good woman. I don't need salvation. But the Bible tells us very clearly that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, which means to say all of us are sinners. And you see, the definition of sin is very different than God's definition of sin is very different from our definition of sin. We think that sin is like murder, it's like robbery and things like that. No, 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 no. God's idea of sin is a much higher standard. For example, even if we have a wrong thought, even if we have a dirty thought, okay, I want to ask you to put up your hand who has ever had one. Even if you had a hatred thought against someone, you don't forgive someone, that is sin in God's eyes, an attitudinal sin. So God's standard is so much higher than ours, and there is no way that we can ever bridge the gap. No way at all. So that is God's standard of judging us. And at the end of life, the Bible says that all of us will have to stand in judgment, in that sense that God will judge us for every sin that we have committed. Can you imagine? God will show on a movie screen, everyone sitting there in a theatre, and, and God will show every sin that you've committed in this life. I certainly don't want to be in that movie theatre to look at what I have done. But we will be judged for every sin in our life. And that we can never, never answer for it. No way. No way. And because God knows that we can never answer for the sin of our life, he loved us so much. He did not want us to perish. He did not want us to go to hell in that sense. He did not want us to be separated from him. That's why he came, gave his life for us so that we can be saved. So that we can be saved. You know, if... Have you ever gone to a shopping center and you see a little kid? Especially in Toys R Us, if you, you know, as parents. How many of you have been to Toys R Us? You know, they sell toys. And this little kid will go there and you and some, you know, sit on the floor. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he wants that toy. And how many parents I say, okay, 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 okay we should, which toy you want we buy? So it's a dangerous place for, for parents to go to, Toys R Us. Very dangerous. Because once you go in, you will be manipulated. Can I ask you something? Does this little kid, has he been schooled to manipulate the parents? The answer is no. He naturally knows how to do it, right? Why? Because it's a sinful nature. 
All of us are born with a sinful nature. You don't have to teach the little kid how to be bad. The, the little kid knows how to be bad by himself or herself. But we need to teach the kid to be good, isn't it? So this talks about the sinful nature that has come down to us from generations uh, be, you know, in, in the past, since Adam time to now. We are all sinners. All sinners, even little kids are. That's why we need the salvation of the Lord. We need God to save us from our sins because we are all sinners in God's sight. It's not just the sin of commission, it is the sin of omission, which means if you know you ought to do something and you didn't do, that's sin as well in God's eyes. So actually all of us have committed this sin of omission besides the sin of commission. So none of us ex are exempt from this. None of us are. But God provided a way for us through Jesus Christ he was like a scapegoat. He took our sins and he put it upon himself. And then when he did that, we are saved. We are saved because when we ask him to come into our lives, he forgives our sins and his precious blood washes us clean. Amen. And that's what the song was about earlier, the blood of Jesus. D.A. Carson, this famous author, said this, if our greatest need had been information, God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was forgiveness. So God sent us a saviour. Can I invite Pastor Andrew to come up right now with his yellow gloves? Because I want him to demonstrate something for us. So take a look at this. Okay, it's, a, it's not a magic show, though he looks like a magician. Yeah. So you see, This represents our life, this cloth. And this is all the sins. Can you all see? Can the camera catch this? Okay, let's let the camera come nearer. This is all the sin, you see, in our life. And, and, and we try our best to wash it away. All right, so here's water. So we try our best. We try to wash. How do you try to wash? We try to wash by being a good person. We try to be good lah. We try very hard to wash away the sins of our life like, like Pastor Andrew is doing by, you know, doing good works. Ah, tita. Wow, do a lot, a lot, a lot of good works. Hopefully. But all that we do, in fact, we try to practice religion. But everything that we try cannot wash away the sins in our lives. And that is the condition of every one of us. But... Jesus did something for us on Good Friday, which is celebrated two days ago. He shed his blood on the cross as represented here. This represents the blood of Jesus. And so when we believe in Jesus, when we receive Jesus into our heart, the precious blood of Jesus washes us like this. Washes us and washes us and washes us. And when the blood of Jesus washes us, see what happens. The blood of Jesus covers us totally and our sins are completely washed away. It's completely wiped off by the blood of Jesus. Let's give him a big hand. Yeah. Thank you, my lovely assistant. This is what Jesus has done for us. The precious blood of Jesus covers our sin so that when God the Father sees you and I, he no longer sees the man and woman tainted with sin and condemned to hell, but he sees the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, that has shed his blood for you and I 
and that blood covers over us. And he says, the price of sin is paid with my son's own blood. You are clean. You are clean. You are clean. Amen. Let's give God a big hand. You are clean. So the empty tomb brings abundant life by first giving us salvation to all who would believe in his name. His blood covers our sin so that we are made righteous in the sight of God. The second point is this. The second way the empty tomb brings abundant life is to give us power to live as overcomers. Everyone say power. power. There is resurrection power that is available for us. 1 John 5 and verse 4. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. You see, this Bible verse says when we put our faith in Jesus, when we believe in him, it is this faith that overcomes the world. This definition of the world is different from the first definition, which was humankind, right? This second definition of the world talks about the value system of this world. It is the value system of Satan. The things that are contrary to the value system of God. The things that are hostile towards God and are corrupted. That is the value system of the world. It refers to things of the flesh, carnality, sinfulness, selfishness, pride. These are attitudes of the world. And the truth of the matter is, all of us struggle with this. The empty tomb gives us power to live as overcomers because of the resurrection power of God that is at work within us. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 and 20 says this, and this incomparably great power, everyone say great power, mm. for us who believe. You see, it's only given to believers, not to just anyone. It's given to those who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted, which is God the Father, he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. You see, the same resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead, which is so powerful, right? I mean, you want to raise someone from, it's powerful. This Bible verse says the same power, resurrection power is available for us. Believers, for us who believe, is available for us for what? To overcome the world, to overcome this world. Friends, the only way that we can change for the better, the only way that we can become a better man, a better woman, a new man, a new woman, is through the resurrection power of the Lord working within us. There is no way by our own strength are we able to change ourselves. It has to be by the resurrection power of God that is available to us that we can change. And right now, yes, are you ready? I want to invite Brother Ling Nong to come share his testimony of how God's resurrection power has helped him. Would you come? Would you come? And he will share with us in Mandarin. Is that okay? Come, come. Yeah. Because he has a powerful testimony to share. You can put your hands on your hands. Good morning, I'm Lim. In the last year, 四月，我的妹妹因白血病而去世。在三天的葬礼中，所有的牧师和许多立圣堂的教友，都来向向我和家人表示哀悼和支持。为了表达我的感激，我就跟女儿去教堂做礼拜，顺道感谢牧师们。礼拜结束后。我决定接受耶稣为我的救主。嗯
领导我的生命，就在信主后的几天内，奇妙的事发生了。在此之前，我有持续的头痛，就像头部很紧绷和压迫，一直在困扰着。但 ，OK， 但就是在信主后的几天内，我发觉那疼痛慢慢的减轻。两个礼拜后，疼痛和紧绷完全消失了。我意识到，上帝已经医治了我，真的很奇妙。我知道上帝一直在看着我。啊，这是第二个见证。在我成为基督徒之前，我年轻时就有购买玻璃和多多的习惯。到现在已经有几十年了，但上帝奇迹般的改变了我。我突然不想有购买的念头。每当我走过任何博彩店时，我也不会想进去投注。我再次体验了上帝如何在我生命中带领我而感到惊奇，超然的奇妙。身为基督徒，我感谢上帝，这些日子为我做的一切。我将所有的荣耀归给我们敬畏的上帝。谢谢。Amen。Amen。And now I will translate what he has said. He said last year in April, he lost his younger sister. To leukemia, and during the three days of funeral wake, all the pastors and many Rizonites came to send their condolences and support to his family, and to so- show his appreciation, he came with his daughter to church, to you know just to come to church. And after service, he made a decision to receive Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. Just a few days after being a Christian, he felt that his persistent headache and neck ache, which caused throbbing pain, And nerve pooling on his head slowly went away, and after two weeks, the pain was totally gone. Amen. He was very amazed that God had been watching over him. And before being a Christian, he had been buying 4D or Toto regularly since his 20s. So many, many years he's been doing this. But miraculously, God had transformed him where he suddenly no longer had the urge to buy them anymore. He's not even tempted to buy them whenever he passed by the Singapore pools. Outlet. Again, he is so amazed how God has been working in and through his life, and he's thankful for what God has done in these few、uh, months. He was just received Christ last year. These few months as a Christian, and he wants to give glory to God. You know, friends, the resurrection power of God has brought transformation to Brother Ling Nong, even in his 60s. I believe he's in his 60s. You know, God has healed him of chronic headache, removed addiction of gambling. He didn't do this by his own strength, but he did it through the resurrection power of God. And friends, you're seated here. We're not just telling you stories; we're telling you testimonies of the power of God. If today there is something holding you back, maybe it's an addiction, maybe it is a stronghold, maybe it is a sickness, maybe it's different things that hold you back from your full potential. Today, know that the resurrection power of God is able to set you free. Amen. God's resurrection power is able to transform your life, so that you can be changed, so that you can experience the power of God in your life and live the victorious, resurrected life. Can you shout hallelujah? Woo! Yeah. Praise the Lord. That is available to you. Amen. So the empty tomb brings abundant life by first of all providing salvation to all who would believe in Him. Number two. It gives power to live as overcomers. And number three, are you ready for number three? I like number three. Number three, the empty tomb brings abundant life by giving us purpose to live this present life. Purpose, purpose is so important. Ephesians two ten says, "For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do what good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do." You know, God has prepared for each and every one of us to do good works, to do good things, 
There is a purpose for your existence. That's what this Bible verse says. It says that you are God's handiwork, created to do good works that He has prepared for you in advance to do. This means that our purpose, there is a purpose for our existence. Life is more than just being born, then going to school, uh, Singapore system, uh, I don't know if they're still streaming at primary three. Primary six, PSLE, SEC two streaming, SEC four, O levels. After that, got SEC five for some, and then A level. If you, you know, can study a bit better, you, you go university, you know, you go uh, different institutions to, to learn. And after that, you look for a job, isn't it? After you look for a job, you try to find a spouse. You try to get married. After you get married, you have kids. After you have kids, you, you try to raise the kids up. After you raise the kids up, then they have, they have kids, so you become grandparents, you take care of kids. And after a while, oh, you leave this earth. Is that the purpose? Is that all there is to life? No. The Bible says very clearly that we are created to be God's workmanship for the good works that He has called us to do. Each and every one of you has a purpose, a unique purpose that God has called you and placed in your life. And the only way to know what your purpose is, is to find it in Christ. God will reveal to you what is your purpose at every stage of your life. Yes, the life process is there. Yes, you will bless those processes. But beyond that, there is a great purpose for you to live out for Jesus Christ. And it's only found in Jesus. God will reveal the plans He has for you in this earth. And when you live it out, you know what? You're going to get a sense of satisfaction. You're going to get a sense of purpose in your life. You know, you wake up in the morning, you won't be saying, oh yeah, another day, uh, another day. Uh. No, you begin, to, oh Lord, what is your purpose for me? I'm so happy because today you prepared plans for me, things for me to work on, good works for me to do. This morning I got up, Lord, I'm so happy I'm going to preach the word today. It's purposeful. Every day we should wake up like that because Jesus gives us purpose. The good works that he has called us to do and you can only find it in Christ, the abundant life that you will have when you give your heart to Jesus. And I want to invite right now Esther. Yeah, let's, let's welcome her. Come and share her testimony of what happened. Yeah. Hello. Okay. So before I received Christ, I struggled with a lot of negative and suicidal thoughts, which comes from the past trauma and also an injured back condition. Uh, I was also overwhelmed with a lot of emotions, negative emotions and pain. And then I went into a very dark period, especially uh, during the time when my grandma passed away two years ago. So, and I didn't see a purpose to live in this world. And I felt like whatever I did was always going to be a burden and disappointment to others. And subsequently, my sister brought me to RCA two years, oh, yeah. two years ago. <laughs> okay, don't get on his phone. Huh? So they can, they can absorb mm. your testimony. Okay. Yeah. Then my sister brought me to RCA two years ago, and I came to know the Lord. Yeah. And after receiving Christ, the Lord guided me slowly through those emotions as I surrender all my burdens to Him. I began to see that I'm God's uh, I began to see that God has uniquely and, fit, and wonderfully made me to be his beloved child, and I'm loved by God. His light shone through every darkness in my heart, and from then on, I was set free from my negative thoughts and suicidal thoughts. Amen. Yeah. And not only that, God showed me that the purpose he has for me, that is to use the gifts that he has given me for his kingdom. And after participating in outreach programs in RCA, such as Bless Your Neighbor Day, I felt like the Lord called me to serve the community. As a final, student, final year nursing student in NUS, I have a strong desire to serve the needy in the community, and I'm praying that after my graduation, God will open doors for me to become a community nurse. Yeah. And uh, as a young believer in RCA, initially I was very afraid of what others would think of me when I wanted to serve in the church as a spiritual parent, and in various ministries such as the video, the sound, and, cre and creative ministries. But God reminded me that as long as my heart is anchored in Him, He will give me the strength to do what He has called me to do. 
And today, I am going as I serve the Lord in all these areas. He, it gives me a great joy to touch lives in this church and in the community I serve. God has turned my broken life and restored into a purpose one. And I pray that for all who are listening to my, to my testimony, just if you are like me, struggling with different issues, know that God loves you and, you and can restore you and give you a purposeful life like what He has done for me. And I thank you and God bless you. Amen. Amen. Yeah, powerful testimony. Did you hear that? God delivered her from negative thoughts and suicidal thoughts. Wonderful. She wanted to end her life two years ago. But God saved her. God saved her. Not only that, gave her a purpose. I didn't know that she was so talented. No? Everything we was asked her to do, everything was okay. Man. <laughs> she did the video for the, watch, the, 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 the crossover service. I didn't know she was so talented. God has a great purpose for her. And is discovered through serving God in this church. Two-year-old Christian, just accepted. I said, are you three years old? He said, it's only two. I said, oh, two years old. Already spiritual parent, you know. It means she takes care of spiritual babies that are born into the kingdom of God. Help them grow. She did the drama just now, the, the gambler. The, what do you call that one? The toast? Whatever you call it. The, the, what do you call that person that deals? Dealer, yeah. You know, drama, you know, reaching out to the community. And God gave her a purpose. Now she realized she wants to serve the community and wants to be a community nurse. That means she told me that she wants to go to the homes where they cannot come to hospital and serve them in their home, correct? That's a community nurse. Final year student, graduating next month uh, from NUS, to be a, um, someone contributing to society, finding purpose in Christ. And friends, you can have the same as her as well. If you're wondering, what's my purpose on earth? You're wondering, what am I supposed to do on this earth? You can only find it in Christ, like how Esther found her purpose in Christ. And today could be the turning point of your life. Because then, with today's turning point of receiving Christ, God will reveal to you His plans for you one step at a time. Amen? And I want to end with this story, and I would like to invite the musicians to come back. Billy Graham. How many of you have heard of him before, this name? Should be quite famous, right? Billy Graham was one of the greatest evangelists that had ever lived in this sanctuary. When Billy Graham was 92 years old, he was struggling with Parkinson's disease. In January, a month before his 93rd birthday, leaders in Charlotte, North Carolina, the place where he was born, invited him to a luncheon in his honour. Billy initially hesitated to accept the invitation because of his struggles with Parkinson's disease. But the Charlotte leader said, Hey, Pastor, don't worry. We don't expect you to give a major address. Just come and let us honour you. And so Dr. Billy Graham agreed. And after wonderful things were said about him, Dr. Graham stepped to the rostrum like this. He looked at the crowd and he said, I'm reminded today of Albert Einstein the great physicist who this month has been honoured by Time magazine as the man of the century. Man of the century. Einstein was once travelling from Princeton because he would be teaching in Princeton University on a train. When the conductor came down the aisle, punching the tickets of every passenger, when he came to Einstein, Einstein reached for his vest pocket. Hmm, he couldn't find his ticket. He reached for his trouser pocket. Couldn't find the ticket. It wasn't there. Then he looked into his briefcase, ransacked the, the, the briefcase, but he couldn't find it. Then he looked in the seat beside him. Couldn't find the ticket. And then the conductor, uh, the conductor said, uh, Dr. Einstein, 
I know who you are. In fact, we all know who you are. <laughs> I am sure you bought a ticket. Hey, don't worry about it. So Einstein nodded appreciatively. Thank you, thank you. The conductor continued down the aisle, punching the tickets. As he was ready to move to the next car, he turned around and saw the great physicist down on his hands and knees, looking under his seat for his ticket. The conductor rushed back and said, Dr. Einstein, Dr. Einstein, don't worry. We know who you are, no problem. You don't need a ticket. I'm sure you bought one. Then Einstein looked at him and said, Young man, I too know who I am. What I don't know is where I'm going. Having said that, Billy Graham continued, See this suit that I'm wearing? He said, It's a brand new suit. My children, my grandchildren, you know, they're telling me I've gotten a little, a little bit sloppy, you know, in my old age. I used to be a, a little bit more fastidious. So I went out and bought this new suit for this luncheon. And for one more occasion. You know what that occasion is? This is the suit in which I'll be buried. But when you hear I'm dead, I don't want you to immediately remember the suit I'm wearing. I want you to remember this. I not only know who I am, I know where I'm going. Life without God is like an unsharpened pencil. It has no point. May each of us live our lives so that when our ticket is punched, we don't have to worry about where we are going. With every